Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Spyderco Swayback. This is a new design by Marcy and Swish, 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 hard to pronounce last name. Um, and it's it's kind of following in his line of designs through Spyderco, uh, the Sleesh Bowie, Swish Bowie, the uh, Spidey Chef, and the Techno 1 and 2. So very similar build quality here, very similar fit and finish. Um, if you kind of know those, probably closer to the Bowie than the uh, Spidey Chef. But regardless, we'll go ahead and jump into it. I'll go over what I like, what I'm neutral towards, what I dislike. But first, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. All right, so first up, we have the Benchmade Bug Out. This is a very popular knife, a very normal knife. Um, so we'll go ahead and add this one in here. I have a few more I want to compare it to size-wise, but this is a good starting point. Um, so you'll see close. It is a little bit longer than the Bug Out, not a ton. Um, I'm not going to compare thickness on all of these knives, but you can see it is a little bit thicker thanks to those contoured scales. And when they're opened, um, it's it's much, much longer just because of the extra handle length and the extra blade length. Now, despite the similarities in the handle length, if you look at the actual grip area, I'll line them up right here, you can see this has much, much more effective grip area, probably another inch or so. Um, which does make a difference. The the bug out for me is uh, quite cramped, but this one I actually have a little bit of a little bit of room down there at the bottom. So if you have larger hands, this is probably going to be just fine for you. Next up, um, this is the spider code that I was comparing it to when I got it. That's the spider code Python. This is mm, probably my favorite knife period that I own, but this is my favorite spider code by a mile. Very similar blade finish, a similar handle finish on these as well. This is obviously more expensive, but there's a lot of things that they could have done here um, that they didn't do, that they, they did in the Python, so that was that was important for me. Um, also note that I do have a Casey Lynch clip on, on this that I just prefer the stock clip, and I'll cover that as well, but that's there. Um, it does match if you get the sand washed or sand blasted finish. Um, those do match these these titanium finishes if you're curious. And we'll do uh, we'll do two more here. Um, this is the Hinderer full track. So closed. It's a little bit bigger. You know, it's it's a very large knife. And open, same thing. But if you actually compare them, they have very very similar overall blade length just because of the finger choil on this one and the lack of a finger choil on this, which I actually prefer. Um, I'm not a big fan of finger choils. And we got one more to do, and that is going to be the Victorinox Tinker. Um, so we'll do a close comparison real quick. Obviously, you know, this one's larger, um, but I do try to do a few comparisons that some of you may have lying around and with the blade open there. That way you can get kind of an idea for the size. All right, let's go ahead and go on to uh, what I like about it. All right, so first thing here uh, has to be the blade. That is the premier feature of this knife, in my opinion. Um, one, you get the uh, just a fantastic boring cliff. Um, if it weren't for this nub here, you could probably get it flat on a table, but that does help with ergos. It's kind of a trade-off. You could always grind that off if need be. Um, but you do get a very, very nice worn cliff here. Super useful shape. Um, a fairly strong but thin tip. It's it's really good um, from the little bit of cutting that I've done with it so far. You get an excellent, excellent hollow grind. This thing is, ugh, the grind on this is, is just fantastic. I, I can't tell you enough how, how awesome it is. It also um, has my favorite blade finish. It's like a uh, mirror stone washed finish. I'm trying to keep my fingerprints kind of off of it here but you can so you can see a little bit. But it is very reflective. You can see my finger in it. Um, but it's also stone washed. So if you do use it, which if you're buying a knife, you're probably going to use it, I would hope. Um, if you do use it, it's not going to show wear all that much. So you can keep it newish looking for a little bit longer. The blade length is really, really, really good as well. Um, just like the Pison, it isn't crowned. It's not a crowned spine on here. But the edges are nice and rounded. They're not sharp at all. Um, same thing with the spidey hole, nice and rounded, but it's it still has enough to grip. 
overall the blade is just excellent the action is as well the action on this is is fantastic i actually uh lightly cut myself with this earlier today so i'm going to be careful but the second you open the lock bar i'm trying to be very gentle here um it will drop it doesn't really shake shut if you're into that you know that's probably not gonna do it for you but in terms of just opening and closing smoothness it's smoother than any sabenza i've felt um i've only handled about three or four different chris reeve knives this is smoother than all of them and it was like that out of the box it was really shocking um and it's on washers phosphor bronze washers now the other you know um switch designs that i've tried the techno one i believe and the spidey chef that i had they were not this smooth they were still very very nice but this is like a different class of smoothness it's it's very strange but i really really like it fit and finish on this is excellent as well um this is in the higher end of spider code's price range so you would expect that but just everything's done really 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 nicely um there's there's no gaps or sharp parts everything is finished very very well everything's covered there's there's no blade play no lock rock you if you press over really hard you can get locked to move a little bit if that's concerning to you um but i don't see it as a safety issue just because it will go over and stop um i can't get it very far over at least on this one maybe over time that could become an issue i'm not gonna be keeping this long enough to uh to know about that unfortunately but everything for the most part is really 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 well done words are hard I'm not a big fan of the handle finish, but I know a lot of people are. Um, I prefer one a bit more like the um, Pison. It's just a little bit less acid washed. It's really hard to tell because they're very, very, very similar. Um, this is just a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother. That's just personal preference. Um, this is going to show wear a little bit more, kind of like the uh, kind of like the Spidey Chef, but I don't think it would mark up quite as bad over time. Um, Spidey Chef is very, very prone to showing snail trails and things like that probably won't do that next up the price so this is in the good section for me why um i've moved into a lot more higher end knives um i've kind of consolidated my collection sold off a bunch of stuff that i didn't carry and i've started trying some nicer things um this is kind of in that range it's about 273 is what i paid from indiana knives and i will leave a link down to his store in the description you guys should definitely check him out um he didn't give me a discount or anything on that but just a really good guy. Anyway, 273 on these. Um, it's not, it's not bad at all, uh, for what you get. Realistically, the blade is just excellent. You know, the fit and finish are excellent. There's a lot of things I don't like about this knife, which we will get to. Um, but a lot of things are really, really good about it. And for what you're getting, the price is pretty solid. Um, I, I've got to be honest. I've I've handled a lot of knives this year that have been much much more expensive than this double this price and they're not nearly as well done not nearly as well made so for what you're paying you're getting a decent bit also unlike the regular you know spider co um cardboard box you do get a, a little pouch with this one um it's just kind of a felt lined you know soft pouch in there it's very very nice it's a lot nicer than the other spider co pouches that i have for like the Pison and the lion spy um, it's a little bit nicer than those. Next up, the lock bar insert. So if you own a uh, Spidey Chef, Techno, Bowie, you know that there's no lock bar insert. And titanium on titanium can cause lock stick, especially in the Spidey Chef. I haven't really heard of any that didn't ship with lock stick. It's just kind of a thing. You, you know, you break it in over time. Mine had it. Mine had it up until the day I sold it. Still a very good knife. But this just skips that issue altogether with this lock bar insert. There's no lock stick on this knife at all. It is extremely, extremely smooth. And you just don't have to worry about it. It's it's just a it's just a nice little touch. I'm really, really glad that they decided to add that on this one. And if Marcin does any future collaborations with Spider Co., I would love to see them on that as well. Now, if you're looking at this knife, you probably notice a few things. You're going to notice the overall shape. It's kind of backwards. It's a sway back design. You may notice the opening hole. And then you're going to notice this giant cutout here. Now, ergonomically, I'm not a big fan of this, and we'll get to that later. But just for unlocking the knife, it's it's excellent. One of the main complaints I have 
about the spider co pies on is that the lock the lock bar is just hard to get to you kind of have to mush your thumb down in there and it's just, it's just not great this completely avoids that problem because i can get my entire thumb on the thing and push it over also the tension on it is very very light um, but the detent is still really really good um, as as you can see it still deploys just fine but the the tension on the lock bars it's just nice. It's not going to wear down your hand at all. Like my hander full track, that it almost hurts sometimes to unlock. Um, it, just a combination of things on that one. But this is very, very nice. It's uh, very similar to the Spidey Chef if you've used that one, um, just without the lock stick. So it's, you know, opening and closing are both pretty good. Last thing I'm going to mention here is the size. It's a good size overall. I was really worried it would be smaller. And that would be the reason I didn't like the knife. That's that's not. But um, for example, the pies on here, which is longer, um, not a ton, but a little bit longer. Um, it is perfect for me ergonomically. I have more than enough space on it, which is probably one of the reasons I've kept it around so long. Um, this one, same thing. Uh, this little guard up here, I can get my finger right up on that. No problem, and I still have a little bit of space at the back, or I can slide back just a little bit. Uh, this does interfere, which again we'll talk about in a moment. But overall, the size I like it a lot. It's not huge. It's it's not super terrifying. You know, it's not a giant giant blade, but it's a nice usable length. And I, I think it's it's probably nearly the perfect size blade and handle, honestly. Um, just in, in my opinion. So if you have larger hands or you want a small big knife, probably going to be a good option for you. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the neutral. All right, on the neutral, first thing up is there is no sharpening choil on here. This is not all that uncommon with Spyderco knives. It's just a thing that they don't do a lot. Um, but on this knife in particular, with it being as expensive as it is, if you don't have someone add a choil on that, over time, this nice straight worn cliff is going to start hooking in and it's going to become a hawk bill. It's going to start recurving. That's not going to be great. Um, you kind of lose the utility of the worn cliff if you have a giant recurve in it. It's just not going to be the same knife. So I would really have preferred them adding a choil in there. It's kind of a, you know, an obvious thing to do. Um, but they just they just really missed it on that one. Um, the plunge isn't super great, but the choil just kills me. They really, really, really need to add that in. If I were keeping this, I'd be adding a choil, choil um, you know, without a doubt. Next up are the ergos. I, I alluded to this several times, but that cutout right there kills me. It kills me because I'm not quite sure where to put my hand. I think this is the most comfortable position for me, um, which is kind of high up on the knife um, for me I prefer oftentimes to be somewhere like right around here but I can't because my finger keeps hitting that that hollow point and it's just not comfortable you can kind of come back on the knife if you have really tiny hands um, my pinky kind of hangs off if I do that but it's just I don't know I can't really find a, a comfortable spot on this knife which is one of the reasons I'm not going to be keeping it it's just not great for me all right let's go ahead and go on to the dislike all right, we will get the small thing out of the way first, and that is going to be the clip. This is not the clip that came with the knife. This is a Casey Lynch clip. It is a deep carry titanium clip. Here is the clip that came on the knife. Now, um, there's a few things wrong with this clip, and I'll just grab, I don't know, we'll, we'll grab the, you know what, here, I have a Spyderco here. This is the Spyderco Breed and Rescue. This is an older knife of theirs, um, and the clip is a standard Spyderco clip. This one, though, is, if you look, significantly higher the silver clip is. Maybe I'll hold it over the, you can kind of see a little better. The silver clip is just, it rides so high off the knife, it's, it's intolerable. Um, that kills ergonomics for me. I have heard from a few other people that they prefer it that way. Um, that that works really well for them ergonomically. Um, but for me, it just doesn't. In addition to that, this clip does not look like it belongs on this knife. 
this clip looks like it belongs on this knife. I would actually probably prefer for it not to be deep carry, um, just to be a 3D milled, you know, similarly finished clip. You're paying almost $300 for it. Get a better clip. That's just ridiculous. Same problem on the Paizan. It's the same stupid thing. There's so many other clips you could have gone with, and it just it bothers me that, that this is the one that they, you know, included there. Anyway, last thing. The opening method. So it has a thumb hole, which, you know, a lot of spider crows have. Paizan has a thumb hole. Rescue has a thumb hole. The Lion Spy has a thumb hole. All of these knives have thumb opening holes. There are two key differences that make this one not good, in my opinion. One is the access. Notice how high this is. There's no ramp towards it or anything. You have to stick your thumb straight down and then push out. There's no coming at it from an angle, really. You can't. You kind of have to push directly down and then open. It's not super great. If you notice on all of these, all of these have plenty of thumb clearance. This one has, you know, a little bit of ramp on the scales there. You can get it out, no problem. No issues at all opening that knife. This one has one more thing that bothers me. And if you flip it over, you'll see. So if I flip over, oops, <laughs> all of these knives, they all have that hole still showing except this one. So what that means is that you can take these knives and you can take your middle finger or pointer finger, whatever you want to do, insert in there and flick the knife open. Seems like a stupid thing, but sometimes it's just a better opening method. Um, in some cases, it just feels better open it that way. You know, for example, on the Paisan, that's how I prefer to open it. Just kind of a preference. This, you don't have that option. You have one way of opening this knife. It is down and out. And it's... For that price, there's just a lot of concessions here that I don't think had to have been made. They could have... Oh. Sorry about that. They could have made the lock bar a little bit more narrow, just made partial clearance, you know, of the spidey hole. That way you could just kind of get a fingertip in there and flick it out. Because this knife would be great for that. Or, um, first thought I had when I got the knife is that this could be a front flipper. This could have been Spyderco's first front flipper. This is probably not the knife they wanted to try it on, but it could have. And I say that for a couple reasons. One is if you notice the tang of the blade comes up so high right here. Now, if you know anything about front flippers, you know that the part that you flip, the tang of the blade, has to be above the pivot. This is quite a bit above the pivot. So, in theory, you could file these down just a little bit, grind them down, the scales, and then add some jimping right there on the spine of the blade, and flick it up no problem. The action's great. Should work just fine. There are a couple problems with that, like the, um, let's see if, you can sh if I can show you here. The proximity of the stop pins. I don't think you can actually see it because how dark it is. Um, I'll grab a flashlight here. But the proximity of the stop pins makes it to where you can't really. Let's see. There we go. So you can see that stop pin, that dark circle in there, right around there. Um, that's where the stop pins actually ride. There's one on each side. And what that does is that kind of prevents it from going in too far um, if you were to grind down the scales for this. You can only go to about there. Um, I, I would love to see someone do that to this and handle it, but at this price I'm not going to, to be the one to, to do that. So let's go ahead and go on to the conclusion. In conclusion, I think this knife is going to be perfect for someone. It is not perfect for me. I think they could have done a lot of things to make this more widely appealing. I've heard a lot of mixed things on it. I've heard some very, very positive responses from it as well. Um, whether those are people, you know, defending their purchase, which I doubt, or they just genuinely like this knife, I'm not sure. What I will say is it's excellent if you can get over the, the ergonomics, the opening method, the clip lack of the choil, um, if you can get over those things, or those things don't bother you at all, or they're different for you, for example, ergonomics, 
if this fits your hand perfectly, then, you know, that's great. This is going to be an excellent, excellent knife for you because it is an excellent knife. It's just not for me. Um, and I'm not sure who I could re even recommend this to just because, you know, um, a lot of people buy knives for a couple of things. You know, they'll buy them for the opening and closing, you know, how fun it is to open and close, or the ergonomics, how well it fits your hand. This doesn't do either for me, um, so it's kind of out, <laughs> in my opinion. I've become progressively more and more picky um, as I'm trying to refine my collection a bit, and this one just isn't going to make the cut. If you're looking for your first Spider Co., I don't know if I'd recommend this one or not, but it's weird, and it's awesome, and it's really, really well done. And if you buy one, you can probably make just about, you know, your money back. I think they're going for about 250 to 260 use right now. So you can probably make back about what you have in it, maybe losing 20 bucks or so. So if it's worth trying, do that. Or if you actually have a dealer near you who carries these and has them in stock because these sold out pretty quick, um, I'd certainly try it and store it and just kind of see, you know, what you think about it. Because it's a weird knife, but it's a very unique knife. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, again, I'll leave a link down to Indiana Knives in the description where I picked this guy up. Uh, definitely check him out. He has some really good prices, and the customer service is excellent. Um, and if you have any questions about this knife or any of the other knives I showed or anything in general, just let me know down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye.